Our mission is to ease the use of broadcast hardware for people making live video, and the E21 controller has been one of our popular entry-level devices for exactly that. You have 16 buttons and a slider, and with that, you can do all the basic stuff on an ATEM switcher. We now introduce three new variants in the same form factor, and that basically feature broadcast-grade push buttons, bi-colored, and with an improved tactile feedback but in the same enclosure. And we managed to squeeze this in because we worked really hard to shrink the CPU platform inside. So now we have more space for exciting interface components. Another thing is that we can offer all of these with power over ethernet. So if you look at this, we have only one cable powering and taking care of communication for this device. We also have displays and one of the most exciting things is not to be seen right here because it's the firmware inside which runs these devices and the exciting web configuration utility. When you unwrap your E21 KP01 controller, it will work like this out of the box. As you push any of these buttons, it's gonna put that input source on preview, like this, this. When you push this button, it's gonna make a cut transition. If you hold down shift as you push this button, it's gonna make an auto transition. And the shift key also gives you access to media player one or two. Uh, it gives you access to uh, enabling downstream key one. And finally, we have a play macro button. As I push this one, the whole controller changes its state to playback macros instead. So I can now play back macro number one, two, three, or four. Number five is not defined. As I press the shift key, I can play back macro number nine. This is how it's set up. And believe me, all this functionality is completely configurable. This is how it's delivered out of the box, but if you want it to work differently, you can easily change this on your own. No complex programming, only the technology of a pen tip, because you push and hold the config button on the controller to bring it into configuration mode, and then you need a computer and a web browser, and this is what you see. So you will get Embedded in the controller, such a web interface like this with a graphical representation of your controller and all you need to do is, yes, pretty intuitive, press the one button if you want to change the function of button one and you see this little window that explains you what happens as you push this button. So we can read that input number one is going to be put on ATEM preview row as I push the button, unless I hold down the shift key, then input number six will be put on preview. So what else could we take as an example? The cut auto button. Let's go back to the top and press the cut auto button. The web interface will bring you down here and you can see in the normal case, I press the button, I get a cut. If I hold down the shift key and press the button, I get an auto transition. So. Let's say I want to change that to fade to black. So no auto transition, I want fade to black instead. So apart from the manual labor in changing the label on the button, all you need to do is access this interface and select fade to black in this rather long list of ATEM features. So if you feel like selecting an auxiliary source instead, no problem, you just select auxiliary output source. But now let's change it to fade to black. So, another exciting feature is you can set the controller in different states, which is what happens with the play macro button. So, when we press this button, all the commands for the buttons are those from column two. So, if I press button number one as it's in the macro playback state, you see that this is what counts. I will playback macro number one Actually, with the toggle feature, it means as I push the button once, it starts playback. As I push it again, it stops playback and so forth. But if I hold down the shift key, it's going to be macro number six. And this is the power of the Skahoy so-called Unisketch universal firmware interface, which is shipping in all our controllers, giving you easy control over your Skahoy device. This is the E21 SSW, and it features the new innovative smart switch menu. 
A smart switch is a button that has a display. So as I press this button, you see how I toggle through the menu options. This is basically how you scroll through the menu. So let's take an example. This part of the menu will allow you, as you turn the knob just next to, to change what sources an auxiliary one on your ATEM switch. Yeah? And as I push the button again, you see I can now select the transition style for ME1. So we have DVE, wipe, dip, and back to mix. If I press it again, you can see fade to black. So the controller doesn't have a fade to black function. I can put it into the smart switch menu if I want to. And as I turn this knob, I'm activating fade to black. And as I turn it again, it's uh, unfading to black, so to speak. And then finally, we have something called state, which I'll get back to. But first, let's take those three simple examples and see how it's configured in the web interface, because you can actually add and subtract functionality of the smart switch menu using the web interface. So you can see that we have four groups of four divisions. So here you see we change auxiliary source for auxiliary one. Here we change transition style for ME1, we cycle through. And here we have fade to black functionality for ME1. And let's say that you want to have access to turning on and off your upstream key. It's really simple. You just press the, the plus and then you get a new division and you select upstream key and then you can decide which ME, which key number and how it's gonna work. So toggle would be turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. And likewise, you could also take functionality out because one of the keys to successful operation of video hardware is to cut away all the options that might distract you, that might offer you a chance to blow it up and just implement the functions that are needed on a live show. And that's one of the visions of Skahoy in making it easier to make live video. So, there was this final thing called the state, and that represents a rather cool way you can use your controller too. So you can see it's currently in the normal state, and as I turn this knob, I'm changing to a state called lower third. And um, now the whole controller will act slightly differently, and you see how the display has changed from showing the status of connections to showing you what is on Media Player 2. And currently, the still on Media Player 2 is index number two. That's a name tag for a guy called Björn. Björn is one of my associates. And as I press this button, you see now it changes to me, Casper. And then as I press button number three, it's uh, Georgie uh, and his name, which is on Media Player 2. And that's all possible because the smart switch menu allows me a way to change the controller to this state so that I can access this relatively advanced function. So now you may see the vision of the smart switch. You can have many more options in that menu than here. You can have fewer if you want, but it adds a lot of flexibility to your Skahoy controller.